Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. So today we're going to look at the ePortfolio. And that's the ePortfolio that was created in Google Sites. I'm going to give you some organization tips. But before I get into giving you those organization tips, I'm going to take you to just give you a brief look at my ePortfolio. So here's my portfolio in Google Sites. And my navigation pane is to the left. I've used a sidebar for that. And uh, there are several pages. What I did, as indicated in my previous um, lesson, I indicated that you organize your portfolio using the six guiding principles. And those are the guiding principles that are used to appraise you for the, the year, for the time, right? So it is suggested that you use those. Why? You don't want to say, for example, you put your evidence on the list of plans. You have unit plans. You have action plan, action research. Um, you have students' work. You have, um, say, recording of your class. And you just put them in like that. What that would do is to just send some level of confusion to your appraising team and having them going all over the place to find what is really connected to the respective guiding principles. So once you put them in a the guiding principle, that is much better for you and your appraisers, the appraising team. So here's my own page. So that's my own page as you can see right there. I've placed a photograph there. And the school name, the address, I've removed these for personal reasons because I really don't want to send out too much personal details. So you're going to find that some information is pulled from this demonstration there. I've included a quote. And down the bottom here, you're seeing next page. I can use that to navigate to the next page, or I could go to the sidebar, the navigation pane to pull up the next page. So I am going to pull up the next page from the navigation bar there. And here it is. I have done a table of content because that is better for um, your appraisers to use as well because they want to ensure that your site is user friendly. Your e-portfolio is user friendly. So therefore, I've created a table of contents. What I've done is to use um, words and then I link it. What you could do as well is to use pictures and link it to the respective pages. But in this case, it would have been too many um, pictures. So I decided to use words. Now, I'm going to use the next page to go to the next page to navigate to the other page. And of course, to the bottom here, you're seeing go to the previous page. So what I've done is link the pages because of course you're creating a site. So you wanna ensure that it is easily navigated by the user. So not just limiting it to the navigation pane where they can go by way of pages. You could of course put in go to next page, next page or previous page and they could navigate from there. Again, this was done by um, typing the text and linking it to the next page. As well, this was done by typing text and linking to the previous page. You could use button to do that. I'll show you how to do that. Or you could use a picture and link it just the same. I'm going to use go to next page, navigate to the other page, which would be about me. Now, so. Here I've provided some details about me because of course you want the appraisers. Just introduce yourself to the appraising team. A way of introducing yourself, right? Now, to the left, looking at the navigation pane, you're seeing about me highlighted with the red line there. And below it, you're seeing reflection, resume, job description, it simply means that within this section, I've created sub pages. So you can create sub pages as well. So once you see the arrow beside, then um, that's indicating that there 
are sub pages or possibly just a sub page. And I'll show you how to create that sub page in this lesson. Now, so I am going to just navigate to the next page. And that's a reflection. And if you remember the previous page, that would have been about me. If you select go to previous page, it will take you back there. I am going to move into looking at one of the guiding principle or oh, I have organized that page for the guiding principle and I'll be using the teaching records guiding principle. As a matter of fact, um, if you look at the navigation pane, you would notice that after my action plan, I have teaching experiences and responsibilities that would be guiding principle one. So you could type guiding principle one, or you could just indicate what specifically guiding principle one is looking at. Guiding principle two is teaching methods and strategies. You have teaching records for guiding principle three, four evidence of teaching innovations, five interactions and with parents and community, six professionalism, and I've added additional um, evidence there to support my work that was done. So as indicated earlier, I'm gonna show you how I've organized my guiding principles. So here I am in guiding principle three. Of course, what I could do is put all the evidences that relate to guiding principle three, just take them and put them in. But again, you don't want to send your appraise the, the, the team, the appraising team, to be searching over the place to find what really links to that to specific objective one, et cetera. Within each guiding principle, there are specific objectives. So what I've done is to ensure that I create sections for each objective under guiding principle three. And I did the same for the other guiding principles. So I've, 3.1 identifies learning differences and the barriers that impede learning and demonstrates competency in adapting instructions to meet the diverse learning needs of students with exceptionalities. And guess what? You really want to ensure that you put the items that relate to the specific objective because of course, at the end of the day, it's gonna make it better for you once your the, the appraising team is able to find I've seen that evidence relating to that objective that you can get your credits. Not only put the item there, but what I've done is to, this is a video recording of a lesson and basically my evidence for there, there it's good if you have more than one evidences, right? And I've not just put the evidence there, I've done a little, notation, basically like a little reflection on the section so that you can basically give an introduction to the appraising team what this evidence is about. You don't want them to be searching and trying to find what is this piece of evidence for, okay? So you are basically trying to be specific so that the appraising team can find exactly what you are really presenting as your evidence to show that, yes, you have done that and it relates to that particular objective. Um, specific objective two, 3.2, holds high expectations for all students and performs is our, our role as a facilitator of learning. Again, I use a video recording there. You can use your lesson plans. There are other sources that you can use as well. What if it was a part of your action plan? What you could do is basically say, see action plan and link it to the action plan. And if you look to the left, my action plan is not in guiding principle one. There's a reason for that. You find that action plan can be served for all six objectives based on what you have in your action plan. So that is a key source for me. So I have that at a specific page and then I'll, for the different areas that it links to, then I create a link to that. And uh, again, it's good if you provide a little note indicating what that evidence is for. So it's like you're doing a little reflection 
and it goes on for 3.3, etc. All right. So basically, um, that's how I've organized my pages, my guiding principles, because I want to ensure that I am specific so that the appraising team is able to pick up what my source is for. And also, once you use the objectives and put the sources under the objectives, you'll find that you yourself don't miss out on anything. As a matter of fact, it's the beginning of the school year. I'm suggesting that you start doing your e-portfolio. You are advised to create that template of your e-portfolio. And once there is an experience, once you have met a particular goal, objective as it relates to a specific guiding principle, just look for that objective under the respective guiding principle and upload your evidence and add your little reflection on that evidence so that at the end of the year, at the end of the, the period, when it's time for you to submit your e-portfolio, it is ready. There is no need for you to be running all over the place trying to find the sources, etc. And remember, in the previous lesson, you were advised to create a Google Drive folder and upload your evidences to that folder so that when it's time for you to link to your e-portfolio, everything is not all over the place. You have it in one location, it is filed, and then you're able to make your link. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.